starts right now. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the site of game two of a three-game set between the Orioles and the Phillies and more Baltimoreans pouring in to Citizens Bank Park. Those who came last night saw an Orioles win and a thriller, three to two, a late inning hit by Colton Kowser's first extra base hit, the game winner, and the Orioles won their third consecutive game. And tonight, game two of this series, Kyle Gibson on the mound for Baltimore. The veteran right-hander returns to Philadelphia where he helped drive the Phillies a year ago to a pennant in the National League. Taiwan Walker on the mound for the Phillies. When we come back, we'll look at the Orioles through 100 games and Ben McDonald will join us as we get closer to our first pitch in Philadelphia. Phillies getting ready for game two of this three-game set at Citizens Bank Park. A lot of Orioles fans among the sellout crowd here a night ago. I expect much more orange and black tonight and tomorrow evening. And thank you so much for being with us. Welcome to it. I'm Brett Hollander. Big Ben McDonald will join us in a moment. Last night, the Orioles played their 100th game of the year. And like so many games before, they won. And they won a close one. And if you look at the totality of the Orioles season so far, and you look at the ranks inside the American League, yeah, it's good. Maybe not great. Bullpen ERA, or ERA is certainly good. Runs per game at just under five runs per game. Certainly very good if you look at where the Orioles stack up in Major League Baseball in that department as well. But then there's something a little bigger happening. Maybe something a bit magical. Something a little harder to explain because you look at these numbers and there's a great disparity between the Orioles' statistical ranks and actually wins and losses on the road in the American League. Orioles first, second in baseball. When scoring first, 32 and eight. One run games, 10 better than 500, best in the American League and comeback wins, 35 of them. That is first in the league as well. And we're joined now by Ben McDonald and it's hard to even measure what the Orioles are doing right now. But we know this, Ben, for well more than a year, the Orioles have been good and really good. Yeah, I mean, they keep coming from behind. I mean, they got the second, what, second most comeback wins in baseball the last two years. Nobody has more this year. They find ways to win run-run ball games. I think a lot of that spurred from last year, being in, in so many close ball games. And if you look at Orioles history, Brett, I mean, there's been six teams that's played in the World Series. Of course, three titles in those six trips. But the theme to that is all six of those teams won 59 or more games within the first 100. This team at 62 wins right now. 
maybe a theme going on here. So, you know, yeah, the Orioles find ways to win. Uh, I'm impressed with them up and down the lineup. I'm impressed with the bullpen. I mean, the starters, the, those numbers don't tell all the story because the starters have been so good in the month of July. The bullpen's been outstanding all year long. Yeah, the bullpen has been nails, particularly in the back end. And if you were to look through all 100 games, all the options you have for most valuable Oriole, it tells a part of the story, too. This is a really talented, deep Orioles ball club, and they have had a ton of great performers, starting with your closer at the back end of your ball game, Ben. Yeah, it's hard to argue that Felix Bautista is not the best closer in the game right now, what he has done as of late. Rutschman, you know the numbers, the winning percentage since he put a, a big league uniform on last year. Austin Hayes has been the best hitter. Tyra Wells. You know, he has been outstanding. 16 of his 19 starts, three earned runs or less, leads it with 110 strikeouts. Of course, Gunnar Henderson, 54 runs scored. And then there's others that you could throw out at me. Ryan O'Hearn's hitting 311, eight homers, 32 RBIs. Where would we be without Yanier Cano and what he did for the Orioles as well? So there's a lot of guys. I mean, it's a – I think Brandon Hyde hit the nail on the head when he talked about the Tampa series not too long ago when he said this was a roster. This was a roster series victory. I think what he means by that and what I took from it, this team, every night it seems to be a little bit different hero for me. They've all done it collectively. Yeah, it really isn't just one. That's what makes that decision for MBO so hard to figure out because you have so many options to choose from. But even after those five, to what you're saying, Ben, it's a laundry list of good players who have contributed at different times over the course of the year. Just think about this. Today the Orioles called up Ryan McKenna. He has had his moments this year. In fact, he won a game right before being sent down to AAA with his walk-off home run in the 10th inning, a game where he came on as a defensive replacement. So it does seem to be somebody else every night. It does. And look, when you look at one-run victories, 19 and 9 in one-run victories, that's the best percentage in baseball. The Orioles were one game below in one-run games last year. They were 23 and 24. This year, they're 19 and 9. But I, I keep going back to last year with a young team. You don't know what you don't know. And this young team just believes that, that it can win. And they got themselves in a lot of close games last year, and they figured out what it took to win ball games. Now they're back in those same situations now, and they've got last year to kind of lean on, and they've been much better this year. That experience certainly goes a long way when we come back to Philadelphia. Lineups in first pitch in game two.
Pre-game set. He'll pitch against his former team, the Philadelphia Phillies, a part of the team last year that won the National League. And a cool moment for Kyle before yesterday's game. Phillies president and general manager Dave Dombrowski handed him the hardware, the National League championship ring. So Kyle gets to put that away for his children one day. And he has a nice memory to carry on with after being a part of that special run the Phillies had a year ago, a big part of that rotation. He gets the ball today against his former club. And Ben, is that nerve wracking to go up against your former team? Yeah, it is. It be because they know him really well, especially Romuto, the catcher, right? Because he caught Gibson a lot last year. The good news to that is Gibson knows the Phillies really well, too. He pays attention. I remember pitching against Baltimore when I came back when, when I was with Milwaukee. They knew me. Chris Hoyles knew me like the back of his hand, but I also knew him like the back of my hand. And so it's going to be a little bit of cat and mouse. It, there won't be a bunch of surprises, I don't think, but, but I think Kyle Gibson is a smart guy. Look, he's been around a long, long time. Matter of fact, he is making his 283rd career start tonight. And so it's going to be fun to watch this, the cat and mouse game between Harper and Romuto and, and others. It's, it's going to be a good game. And, and look, Gibby was really, really good his last time out. And he really set the tone for me. You know, everybody knows that that Tampa series was one of the biggest series of the year. you got to go on the road. It's a difficult place to play. And he took game one, and he got game one going for the Orioles, and he really set the tone. Yeah, the Orioles eventually took three out of four in that series. It's Taiwan Walker on the mound for the Phillies. This is the batting order for Brandon Hyde's Orioles. Gunnar Henderson back in the top spot and back at shortstop. Rutschman, who had the full night off last night, He's back batting second and behind the plate. And at the bottom of the order, the two young guns, Colton Kowser, who had the game-winning RBI last night in the ninth inning, and then Jordan Westberg, who had his first major league home run a night ago down the right field line to face Taiwan Walker, the veteran right-hander. Yeah, Taiwan Walker had a career year last year, won 12 games with a 3.49 ERA. He's got 11 wins this year. How about that? And when a win tonight, he would have the major league lead in wins in baseball. He's had a solid year, 94 punch outs, 43 walks, making his 21st appearance. And boy, I tell you what, the month of June, he was off the hook, five and one in six starts in the month of June with a 1.5 ERA. It's not been quite as good in the month of July, but his last time out, he gave up four runs in six innings, struck out six against the Brewers. Walker has been around. He is from what state, Ben? He was born and raised in Shreveport, Louisiana. When he was young, though, he moved out to California. And this is StatCast powered by Google Cloud. We'll take a look at Taiwan's Walker. Now, this was on July the 5th, his pitch arsenal. See the splitter? He loves the splitter. It's since July the 5th. A couple of starts. How about the splitter batting average? 167. The sinker, which he throws a lot of two-seam fastballs, more two-seamers than four-seamers. A good opponent's batting average on that as well at 167. Yeah, one of the Phillies broadcasters said when asked about Walker, splitter, then there's a splitter, and after that, there's another splitter. <laughs> and that's what it's been recently for Taiwan Walker, 30 years of age, in his 11th big league season. He has been around the Phillies' his fifth club, originally drafted by the Mariners in 2010 out of a high school in California. But as Ben mentioned, he is from Shreveport, Louisiana. How far away is that from Baton Rouge? About four hours. Four hours straight north. Gunnar Henderson to lead things off for Baltimore. Orioles going for their fourth consecutive win. And a swing and a miss to get the game started. A win also would make it six out of seven for the Orioles. They begin the night two and a half games up on the Rays for first place in the American League East. Yeah, we talked about the tough schedule coming out of the All-Star break. You had the Marlins, the Dodgers, and the Rays. Of course, the Phillies is where you are now. The Orioles are 8-3 and three since the All-Star break. One and two to Henderson. And you saw last night when the Phillies really were matching up late. They started the game with some of their best players on the bench, but when they had an opportunity to go for a win, they went for it. I mean, the game matters a lot to them, too. They're only a half game back of that final wild card spot in the National League. Yeah, this is a good team the Phillies have, and it, it, they've been very, very streaky as of late. Boy, there's a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. We talk a lot about the splitter, and if you get up there and you start looking for that splitter, Taiwan Walker has plenty of arm to get it by you. Back-to-back -back splitters and a really good two-seam fastball right on the outside part of the plate. 
Good start for Taiwan Walker. Henderson down on strikes, one away, top of the first. On a beautiful night for baseball in Philadelphia. The rains came through this afternoon. Some big storms. It looked wicked for a while. Lots of wind, but looking out at the flags now, that beautiful. wind has gone away. Just a beautiful afternoon. Adley Rutschman takes a strike, one and one. Adley got the full night off last night, which is rare. He did not DH. He did not pinch hit. He did not catch. And he rolls this to shortstop. There's Trey Turner on to first. A low throw, but dug out by Bryce Harper. Well, here's the Phillies defense behind Walker. Brandon Marsh gets to start in left. Rojas back in center. Nick Castellanos in right field. Trey Turner. And Bryson Stott is your double play combination. Baum is over in third. Bryce Harper in first base. He hasn't been there a whole lot in his career. And JT Romuto behind the home plate. Three time All Star, two time Gold Glover, Romuto. Yeah, Harper, who they wanted to get at first base for a number of reasons. As Santander takes the strike, home one. Really an outfielder. He's going to go back to the outfield next year. Dealt with a lot of injuries this year, and they just wanted to get his bat back in the lineup. So he was DHing for almost the entire season until very recently he started playing first base. Yeah, you know, he had that Tommy John surgery, and he had it late. Obviously, the Phillies made that, that deep, deep run all the way to the World Series. He lost to the Astros, and Harper needed surgery, and he finally got surgery. But he came back in a record amount of time. I mean, it's not been long at all. He made it back. And, of course, not able to throw those long throws as of yet. But... He is athletic enough. He made three starts over the weekend at first base, and they said he really did well over there. Anthony takes one low, one and two. Yeah, he's such a good athlete. I mean, you saw yesterday he was thrown out at the plate, but he still has a lot of confidence at 30 years of age in his running ability. Just inside to Santander, maybe low. Two balls and two strikes. You know, and it kind of rejuvenates you in some ways, too. You know, you get to a new position. He's got his spikes in the dirt for the first time in his career. You see, he's getting used to a little walk up there, a little, little crow hop. That's going to get down for a base hit for Santander, and it's going to go up against the wall. Anthony streaking for second, and he'll make it standing. A two-out double for Anthony Santander. Good for Santander. 0 for 4 last night. A good start for him tonight. A two-out double. Yeah, split finger fastball, but this one left kind of just right in the heart of the plate in Santander on time. And you can see where the right fielder Castellanos was. He was swung over more toward right center field, so an easy double. His 26th of the year. And that leads the ball club. And here's Ryan O'Hearn as the Orioles look to get on top early. What a ton of action last night for the Orioles runners in scoring position. Only four opportunities. That one was a big one. And the umpires for tonight's game behind home plate the crew chief Lance Barksdale at first base Dan Merzell second base Ryan Addington and at third base Will Little who's behind the plate last night Owen two to Ryan O'Hearn who had some big big hits in St. Pete this past weekend or did he ever and he hits this the other way but it just goes foul yeah runs have been hard to come by for the Orioles. Last five games on this road trip, only averaging just a shade above three and a half runs per game. But they are four and one in those five games, and that's because the pitchers have been outstanding and the defense has been even better than that. Santander leads from second base, just underway in Philadelphia. Up and away to O'Hearn with a fastball by Walker, one and two. Well, Ryan O'Hearn doesn't qualify, but if he did, he would lead the Orioles in on-base plus slugging percentage. That's how good he's been. He just gives you a professional at bat every time. And, and we talked about his growth the other day, and I remember him in Kansas City, but his growth now is he just doesn't chase many bad pitches. I think he's enjoying every moment of this ride right now. Well, I remember he told us 
you know, about a month and a half ago, he said, I, I've had enough of AAA. Like, I'm not going back to AAA. This is where I want to spend the rest of my career is in the big leagues. And I'm going to do everything I can every day to stay in the big leagues. Well, he's done that. Well, James McCann, who's been around Major League Baseball for a decade, he told our own Melanie Newman during those extra pregame that he's never seen a mix of players like this. He's never had this much fun. And everyone, and he said this, it came out of him like this. Everyone loves each other. Yeah. Oh, Hearn skies this to right field. Castellanos over. Shy of the warning track, he makes the catch. O'Hearn and the Orioles retired. Baltimore held off the board in the first. No scores. We head to the bottom of the first. Here's how the Phillies will line up against Kyle Gibson pitching against his former team and the Phillies batting order again has Kyle Schwarber at the top of the order although he is the DH tonight and not in left field and then batting fifth young Bryson Stott having a great season hitting 301 that's good for fourth best in the National League and that lineup against Kyle Gibson on this Tuesday night Ben. Yeah Kyle Gibson making his 22nd start of the year. Kyle Schwarber rips one on the first pitch. Yeah. Foul. Kyle Gibson leads the Orioles in innings pitch with 121 of those on the year. 11 year big league career. 98 97 with a 4 5 ERA and picked up career number strikeout 1300 his last time out. And again, trying to become a 10 game winner. 0 2 to Schwarber. He's going to need that pitch right there tonight. Got some lefties in the lineup. That changeup's going to have to be good. One and two to Schwarber. Yeah, Kyle Gibson ended the first half with a bang on the final Sunday before the break against the Twins. Really strong, as Ben mentioned, to set the tone in that Rays series on Thursday night. He had a quality start, his 10th of the season. Well, he's been everything the Orioles hoped he would be. Starting off with a leader in the clubhouse, a veteran presence to a young pitching staff. And he's been good. I mean, look, 13 of 21 starts, three earned runs or less. He's got 10 quality starts under his belt. And he starts the game off with a strikeout. Really good changeup. He threw Schwarber three of them, too. And he's got to use that fastball to be in the low 90s. He'll have to use it to the inside part of the plate to be able to get to this changeup. This is outstanding. Well done. Let's take a look at Kyle Gibson's pitch arsenal in 2023. Sinking fastball 25% of the time. That's his main fastball. Between the two, the two and the four seamer, about 38% of the time. 18% on the changeup and the sweeper. And boy, that sweeper, which is the new pitch he picked up here last year, the month, the last month of the season. The whiff rate on that sweeper, 49%. That is outstanding. 
Trey Turner the batter. He had a tough night last night. And a lot of boos for Trey Turner. 0 for 3 at the plate. His night ended when he was called out on the strikes in the fifth with a runner in scoring position. And then was ejected from the game. But defensively, he made two errors. Yeah. Not like Trey Turner. Well, here's the Oriole defense behind Kyle Gibson. Gibson is the fourth best defense in baseball. According to fielding percentage, Hayes in left, Kowser in center, Santander over in right. Henderson and Fraser up the middle, Westberg at third, O'Hearn at first, and Adley Rutschman back behind home plate for the Orioles. Nasty sweeper there, and it's two and two to Turner. Yeah, for Kyle Gibson, he begins this night ninth in the league in innings pitched. Boy, and the big difference for Kyle Gibson this year with the Phillies last year he gave up 24 home runs Brett we were talking about that before the game he's only allowed knock on wood only 10 home runs so far this year. And that is the six fewest when you look at home runs per nine in all of baseball. To shortstop Henderson on to first two away. Everything working so far for Gibson good sinking fastball he's creating a lot of those ground balls when he's doing that. A good sweeper and some really good changeup so far. So he's getting that full arsenal going early. Infield defense always important, but they better be ready early when Kyle Gibson's on the mound. Bryce Harper will bat. Two outs, bases empty. Harper a two for four night last night. And on one pitch, he pops it up in foul ground. Long way to go for Westberg, and he makes the catch. Jordan Westberg, a tremendous play. He was shaded to the pull side with Harper, and he had a long way to go to make that play. We're scoreless after one here in Philadelphia. is Jenny Portillo from Greenbelt, Maryland. She has won $500 for being selected and will win $500 more for every Orioles home run hit tonight. Learn how to be the fast play contestant in the game and have one more chance to win $50,000 at mdlottery.com slash home run. And congratulations to Jenny Portillo. That's right, Mountcastle leads off for Baltimore in the top of the second against Taiwan Walker. And he rips this up the middle and through. A base hit for Mountcastle, who hit the longest home run of the season here 
at Citizens Bank Park a night ago. Yeah, that was off Christopher Sanchez in the sixth inning last night. A good start for him tonight, too. This ball in on his hands a little bit, but Mountie is so strong. He still fights it off. Gets enough of the barrel to it to get it by a diving Trey Turner. I know you had a chance to talk to Ryan last night. I chatted with him today. That felt really good. I asked him, I said, did you get that one? He goes, I got that one. I said, I guess you did. Adam Frazier, the batter. And it's 1-0 to Frazier. Alec Bohm, the third baseman, was pinched in. Frazier, a good bunter. To the right side and through. Mountcastle headed for third base, and he'll make it easily. First and third with nobody out to start the second for the Orioles. What a start here in the top of the second for the Orioles. Leadoff single by Mountcastle. Frazier right behind him but a ground ball of his own that gets through. This time a diving stock couldn't come up with it. Mountcastle easily goes first to third. Well, Adam Frazier is, to me, quietly putting together a really good year for the Orioles. 45 RBIs. I mean, that's the second most RBIs in the lineup tonight for the Orioles, only behind Santander. Well, here's Austin Hayes, who has been in a bit of a slump post All-Star break. And looking to bust out. Hayes just 6 for 41 since the break. He has been so consistent the entire season. Most of the year among the American League leaders in batting average. Snap throw by Walker. Austin Hayes starting to get a lot of off-speed pitches because he's covered some fastballs this year. He's been a really good fastball hitter for the Orioles. Always has been. Hayes rips this into left field, and that's a base hit off the wall. Mountcastle will score. Frazier will stop at third. And it's an RBI double for Austin Hayes. 1-0 Baltimore. Well, it ain't no joke here in the second inning, that's for sure. Orioles coming out hot. Mountcastle with a single. Frazier with a single. And there is Austin Hayes with an RBI double. And the Orioles are wasting no time. Taiwan Walker misses the spot on the fastball. Trying to go down the way instead. It's pretty much middle of the plate. And Austin Hayes is on time. There comes Mountcastle with the first run of the game for the Orioles. Colton Couch will bat. He had his first major league extra base hit a night ago, and it was a game winner, it turned out to be. Now, also last night, his good buddy Jordan Westbury hit his first major league home run, but the internet seemed to think you put that home run into existence, Ben, last night. Well, we just said it, it had to happen eventually. And then, bang, it happened. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, are we trying to put Cowser's first home run into existence? I wouldn't complain at all, but I tell you what, off one of the best relievers in baseball last night, Craig Kimball, a little breaking ball on the outside part of the plate, and Cowser just shoots it right down the line. Schwarber couldn't come up with it. First career extra base hit. Of course, that was the go-ahead and winning run for the Orioles. And after the game, Cowser had the walk-off winning interview with our own Melanie Newman. And typically Gatorade, water, maybe shaving cream. Well, you'd like to have a base hit here, but just a routine ground ball to one of your middle infielders will plate yet another run. Phillies are playing the infield back. But Cowser got something else last night in that post-game interview. We'll have. And let's go to Melanie with the end of that story. Well, Brett, everybody joked on the internet that obviously it was milk because it's Colton Cowser. Colton had no idea. I said, have these been, have these cow jokes been going on? He said, no, not really. He goes, man, you didn't tell me I had something on my face last night. He thought all they poured was water on him. And he kept wondering, why does this taste like vanilla? Jordan Westberg went and got a cup of coffee creamer. Cowser rolls his foul. That is funny. And Melanie, I thought Colton did such a good job yesterday. You asked a question. The <laughs> milk was dumped on him. And then... He froze for a moment and said, wait, what was the question again? But he yes. gathered himself. He said, I just, I just 
didn't want to go right there. And listen, he saved the microphone. So he's already acting like a seasoned veteran at this point. I did promise him, guys, next time he gets the walk-off interview, I'll keep a cup of water on the side. We'll make sure his face is clean. Thank you, Melanie. When you have the game when he hit, I don't think you mind. Two and two to Kowser. One run in for Baltimore, but threatening for much more. Second and third with nobody out. First three have reached in this top of the second off Taiwan Walker. And that's ball four. So the eighth base on balls for Colton Kowser already in his young career. The bases are loaded. And that will get Jordan Westberg to the plate. Yeah, Kowser's start to his career kind of reminds you a little bit of Gunnar Henderson's start at the beginning of the year. He wasn't getting a lot of base hits, but he was getting on base a lot. Yeah, very similar. In fact, we've seen that with a lot of these young Orioles. And we know the reputation is great plate discipline. Very patient. They can do damage, but I think for them, it's trying to figure out the aggressive to patience ratio at the plate. Well, speaking of damage, this was the damage that Jordan Westberg did last night as he stepped to the plate in the second inning. And how about this? An opposite field home run right down the right field line. The first career home run. What we hope is going to be many for Jordan Westberg. That would get the Orioles off to a 1-0 lead. They would eventually go on to win 3-2 in game one of this series. Caleb Cotham, the Phillies pitching coach, gets a word in with Walker. Now back in the home dugout here at Citizens Bank Park. Huge opportunity for Westberg. Bases loaded for Baltimore. And they lead this game 1-0. Good speed on the bases for the Orioles. Frazier at third, Hayes at second, Kowser the trail runner at first. Oh, and two to Westberg. That's kind of where the fastball is going to be for Taiwan Walker. 92 to 94. Good sink to it. That splitter is going to be about 88 miles an hour. We'll throw an occasional cutter. And that just goes foul. Well, if you're Westbrook here, are you just defending with two strikes? With two strikes, you have to defend because you got a pretty good fastball and a really good splitter. No defense to that. Westbrook caught looking, one away. That looked like that sweeping slider. Right to the top of the zone on the outside part of the plate. That's a big out and a big pitch for Taiwan Walker. When he's on his game, he's creating a lot of ground balls. That's what he'd love to create here if he could. Gunner trying to drive the ball somewhere. Gunner has that one grand slam. That was earlier this season, but four for 11 lifetime with the bases loaded. Two and zero to Henderson. So now you're ahead with the bases loaded. Now you look for your pitch. You're looking for whatever you want to sit on. Probably a fastball in this count, and you want it to be middle of the plate. But discipline enough. If it's not the pitch you're looking for, or the location you're looking for, you can afford to take it with two zero count. Three and zero to Henderson. And he's the guy you want up right now since June first. He's slugging 575 OPS well over 900. Hey, look, and I'm telling you, careful here because he's probably got the green light. He got one over, and it's 3-1. and one. Bags full for Gunnar Henderson. The 3-1. And it's popped up. Shallow left. Marsh is in. He'll camp under it, and he makes the catch. 
Another big out for Taiwan Walker, and they're two away. Boy, Henderson just got beat there with a fastball. And Taiwan Walker is a pretty hittable pitch, but Gunner just a little bit late on it. Not able to push it deep enough to get the second run home. Walker falls behind 3 0 to Henderson with the bases loaded. And he eventually induces a pop out to left field. So it's up to Adley. Who's 3 for 10 lifetime with the bags full. And Rutschman is ahead in the count 1 0. The Orioles are driving up that pitch count for Walker. Already at 43, he trails this game 1 0. Rutschman, a big swing, and it's 1 and 1. Well, Adley is someone you really trust in these spots because he rarely gets himself out, he rarely chases. To center field. Charging is Marsh, and he'll make the running grab. And the Orioles leave him loaded. Yeah, Taiwan Walker works out of a big jam, but the Orioles strike first. Mount Castle with a single. Right behind him, Frazier with a single. And there's your RBI double by Hayes. The Orioles lead one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Here are the live odds for the over-under starting pitcher strikeouts. And you see the numbers there for Kyle Gibson. The over for five and a half is plus 110. The under at minus 145. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. And customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Use promo code DIAMOND when you sign up. Orioles have won nothing but a golden opportunity missed in the top of the second. They left him loaded. It was the bases loaded. After a Kowser walk with a run in already. And then Westberg struck out. Henderson popped out. And then Rutschman flew out to left field. And Walker was out of a big jam. Well, if you're a pitcher and you get out of that allowing just the one run, confidence goes way up. Because that's when you really grow as a pitcher in your confidence. When you get yourself in the jams, you figure out ways to work out of big jams, and you do. Cassiano's the batter. To third base, Westberg on to first, and Cassiano's is retired. You can celebrate the 40th anniversary of the 1983 World Series on Saturday, August 5th. When the O's take on the Mets at 7.05, be one of the first 20,000 fans, 15 and over, to receive an Eddie Murray 1983 World Series bobblehead presented by Royal Farms. Get your tickets now at Orioles.com slash tickets. And the Orioles today released the list of players from that championship ball club that, by the way, beat the Phillies in five games and won it at Veterans Stadium. 
What a list of players coming back for this. And what a testament to the Orioles. Names like Mike Boddicker, Al Bumry, Rick Dempsey, Dan Ford, Tito Landrum. Storm Davis on that list? Storm Davis, who did two tours with the Orioles. Yeah. Former teammate of yours. That's right. And then some guys named Murray and Palmer and Cal coming back. Kenny Singleton, John T-Bone Shelby. It's going to be a great time. Please join us at Camden Yards for that weekend coming up against the Mets as we celebrate that 1983 World Championship. Storm Davis. Now that is a baseball name. Three and one to start. Gibson has retired the first four hitters he's faced tonight. Trying to follow up Dean Kramer's performance a night ago. Yeah, Dean Kramer was huge last night for the Orioles. When he needed to be because of the bullpen being down. The back end was down. Bautista was down. Cano was down. Baker was down last night. And he needed to give some length, and that's exactly what he did. The 3 2 to start. Roll to the right side. Frazier has it. Two away. And a lot of ground balls early, Ben. Yeah, not a ball out of the infield yet. The one fly ball was caught by Jordan Westberg in foul ground right around third base. JT Real Muto, who did not start last night, back behind the dish for the Phillies on this night. Catching and batting six. Overall numbers down for Real Muto this year. But he's one of those year in, year out, among the best catchers in baseball type of players. Yeah, and one of the most durable, too. I mean, he is behind home plate a lot for Phillies. And when you play these days into deep October, six games of a World Series, that is a full season and then some for a catcher. Yeah, and especially at 32 years old for a catcher. Could you see lag effect the next year after catching all those games? I mean, in the, in the postseason, the leverage innings. And remember, they've added another round. This is a team that had yeah. a fight from the wild card series to get to game six of the World Series. I think so, but Ramuto's always done that, right? He's always been a very durable catcher. He's always caught a lot of games behind home plate. Going to. Ramuto just gets a piece of it to stay alive. Does have 12 homers, 40 RBIs, and 12 stolen bases for a 32-year-old catcher. And the Phillies do like to run now. That's one thing they do do well. Sixth in baseball at stolen bases. They have 83 of them. They were really good last year, fifth most in baseball last year. One and two to Real Muto. When you look at the Phillies' batting order, you wouldn't think by the names they would be middle in the pack in most offensive categories. Schwarber, Turner, Harper, Cassianos, Stott, Real Muto, Bohm, who was a first-round pick and a highly touted prospect. Swing and a miss. Gibson gets his second punch out. He's six up, six down to begin this Tuesday night. When you come to Philly, what else? But a cheesesteak, one nothing Baltimore.
These stakes going to break. So we should go ahead and tell you, you got to tune in tomorrow, guys. It was Ben, Brett, Jeff, and of course myself. We're going to take you all around Philadelphia as we took a cheesesteak crawl. We're going to give you the best picks the next time that Birdland ends up here. You know exactly where to go. And guys, I'm going to say it again. You've got a few more that you're going to have to eat in the park here tomorrow to really round out the experience. Mel, i got to be honest. I don't care if I ever see another cheesesteak. <laughs> right, you were moving kind of slow today. Are you, are you well? I'm cheese. I'm cheesesteak out is all I can tell you. We'll do it uh, no whiz and wit out tomorrow just for you. Yeah, the whiz just didn't do it for me. I mean, that's not even real cheese. That's like cheese out of a can. But it, but I, I was a good I was a good trooper, and, and I tried it with cheese whiz, and, and I'll never do it again. Mel, you know you don't have to twist my arm for me to eat a cheesesteak. Now, that's some hard-hitting journalism, by the way. Congratulations to you three for taking the cheesesteak ball. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I think there's an Emmy in your future. One nothing Baltimore top of the third. Anthony Santander doubled his first time up. I think you were sick Ben of the conversation. I can tell you this there's a lot of Oriole fans out. We <laughs> ran into Oriole fans everywhere. It was something else. But if I'm choosing between a crab cake and a cheesesteak no. it's crab cakes all day long. What about gumbo. Now gumbo. I did ask uh, just for fun for uh, a cup of seafood gumbo and a link of boudin and they looked at me cross eyed like, like, like I was crazy. <laughs> What's the last thing you just said boudin. You wanted to find that for me. You would like it. A little rice a little bit of meat and, and it's almost in a sausage kind of tube. This will find the seats off to our left. Three and two to Santander. Well, three and one, I beg your pardon. Oh, look at there. See, Baltimoreans are good people. Nicely done. To a Phillies fan. That's perfect. Give it to the kid, and he did. So three and one to Santander. Three and two. Mountcastle said earlier today he does want to get a cheesesteak, but. He feels it's only appropriate on a day where he's the designated hitter. <laughs> Might be a good idea. He said, I don't think it will help him in the field. He wants to be flexible out there. Popped up. The pitcher, Walker, will give way to the first baseman, Harper. And that's the first out in the top of the third. Get a 2023 Burland membership today and receive priority access to the 2023 postseason. All members receive benefits, including an increased discount on concessions and merchandise up to 30% off. Burland rewards and more. Purchase now at Orioles.com slash membership. Ryan O'Hearn, who's 0 for 1, will bat for a second time. 1-0 Baltimore, top of the third. Middle game of three. In this 95 series. O'Hearn drives this. Center field. Rojas back at the warning track at the wall. And he'll make the catch. O'Hearn gave it a ride. It seemed like it hung up forever. And Rojas got there for out number two. Yeah, just a little bit too much elevation. 105 off the bat. And the wind's kind of blowing in from left center field, too. And I'm sure that had something to do with it. Just a breaking ball. He waited back on 35 degree launch angle. And you see Rojas all the way up to the wall to make the catch. O'Hearn did not miss that by much, but there are two away. One and one to Mount Castle. Well, here's what Mount Castle did last night. Orioles up one to nothing in the sixth inning with one out, and he stepped to the plate. And boy, he gave this cut fastball a rise. Straight away center field into the trees now. Boy, I tell you what, Christopher Sanchez was good. He gave up two runs in seven innings. Both solo shots, one by Westberg, one by Mountcastle. That was Mountie's 12th long ball of the year. The Orioles couldn't hit the changeup, and then that little get me over cutter or slider 
Mount Castle says thank you very much. I know what to do with that. Two and two to Ryan. Last night that home run that was his first long ball since May 24. Wow. The longest home run in this ballpark this year. 451 feet straight away center field. And we talked about the power of Mount Castle. I mean, you put him and Henderson right there side by side. Full count to Mount Castle. Payoff pitch for Taiwan Walker. But first, Mount Castle calls time. The 3 2. Another base hit for Mount Castle. That was smoked into center field. And Mount Castle's a two out base runner. Yeah, and I love where he's hitting the ball right now because when Mountie starts hitting it back from whence it came, right back up the middle of the opposite field, that tells me he is locked in and letting the ball travel. That single 106 off the bat. And these are right on right, Ben. Yep. These are some really good at bats by Mount Castle. Adam Frazier, who singled already tonight, he'll bat for a second time. Frazier, a new career high with 12 home runs this year, two more than his previous career high, and it's only game number 101. Taiwan Walker gets that sinking fastball going. That's the one he can start inside to the left. He's a little bit in off the plate and just leak it right back over. As a hitter, you give up on that because you see it in. There's a ball off the plate and it just works its way back to the inside corner. Two and one to Adam Frazier. Taiwan Walker now in his 11th big league season. 65 wins, 54 losses career with a very good ERA of 3.9. He picked up his 900th career strikeout his last time out. The high strike goes the way of Taiwan Walker. It's two and two. Yeah, trying to go down and away with this one. Left it kind of a little bit high. Looked like a split finger fastball, but lands it. Gets a call strike right at the top of the zone. There goes Mount Castle. It's a foul ball off the bat of Frazier. So Taiwan Walker been already at 65 pitches and he has not finished off the Orioles in the third. That time Walker may have had Mount Castle leaning and a pickoff attempt at first base. The 2 2 to Frazier. Another throw over to first base. And Mount Castle is back, and that would be Walker's two disengagements. Yep. See how aggressive Mount Castle wants to be now. Walker's a good guy to run on. Six foot four. He likes his split finger fastball and two strike counts. A lot of times that ball will be in the dirt. Not going, and this is roped in the right field. That's a base hit heading for the corner. Mount, Mount Castle to third base. He's getting the send around, and he's going to score. And Frazier will try and get into third, and he is out. But it is an RBI double for Adam Frazier and a 2-0 Baltimore lead. Well, there's your big two-out base hit. This Adam Frazier rifles this ball down the line. Mount Castle off and moving. It's a foot race now between the right fielder, Cassiano, and Mount Castle. He scores. Frazier hesitates just enough, and he's out at third base with the Orioles up 2-0.
Frazier rifles this ball down the line. It's a foot race right now. Mountcastle's going to score all the way from first base. But right here, you can see Frazier trying to pick up Tony Mancellino and whether to go or not. And that little bit of hesitation right there is what cost him a triple. And I don't know if Frazier just didn't pick up Tony. It looked like Tony was cranking him the whole time, but hesitated just enough and a really good relay throw by the Phillies to get the Orioles off the field. But a 2 nothing lead. Right now, the Orioles out hitting the Phillies 6 0. As Kyle Gibson has retired the first six batters he's faced tonight. And to me, and I'm curious to talk to Frazier about this, Ben, it looked like he couldn't find Mancelino. That's what it looked like to me. And that hesitation was all the difference in the world. Again, final out of the inning at third base. Well, the good news is Orioles score first again, and we know when they score first in a ball game, what's the record? It is really, really good. Scored first last night. The Orioles are 32 and 8 when they score first. Ripped into left field off the bat of Alec Bohm, and that's a base hit down the line in the corner. Bohm will cruise into second base with a leadoff double and the Phillies' first hit. The first hit and the first ball that has left the infield off of Kyle Gibson. As Alec Bohm came in hit 279, nine homers. He's got 61 RBIs. That's a lot of production down towards the bottom. Just looked like a cutter. Kind of a front door cutter left to kind of enter third and Bohm his own time. So a leadoff double for the Phillies here in the bottom of third as they try to answer back. Brandon Marshall bat. He's having a nice season. These aren't your typical seven and eight hole hitters with Bohm and Brandon Marsh. Yeah, Marsh in his third season, but spent his first year and a half in the big leagues with the Angels. Right, and you mentioned in the, in the last inning about the Phillies and their struggles offensively, you know, and you look at two things, two things that jump out to. They're 20th right now in baseball and home runs. Last year they hit a bunch of them. They were the sixth best team in hitting home runs last year. So homers are down a little bit to this point from what they did last year. And March goes the other way and loops a base hit into left field. Stopping at third base is Bohm. And the Phillies have something going. First and third with nobody out. Well, the bottom part of the lineup getting it done for the Phillies. Bohm with a leadoff double and a really good piece of hitting right here by Marsh. Ball working to the outside part to play the sinking fastball. He just kind of flicks it out in left field. So first and third and nobody out for the Phillies. An impressive young athletic player, Johan Rojas, will bat for the first time tonight. Yeah, Rojas had a really nice night last night. Two for four, two stolen bases. He can really run. Home at third, Marsh at first. And it's all one to Rojas. He's a tough guy to double up here, too. Yeah, he's got to hit it hard in the infield to double him up. It's almost got to be like a one or two hopper right to the shortstop to have a chance to double him up. In the center field, and Kowser will have to play this on one bounce. And the Phillies are on the board. Bohm scores. Marsh stops at second, and it's two to one Baltimore. Wow, so after no hits, the first two innings, six up and six down, three consecutive hits, and that's a good piece of hitting right there. You see Rojas just goes down. Watch him just stick his nose on this low fastball, just barrels it up right out towards center field. The Phillies are on the scoreboard. Yeah, 92 miles per hour off the bat by Rojas, but by far the hardest hit of the inning for the Phillies. And now Kyle Schwarber takes a strike on one. So now the big boys do up. The Phillies already with a run in. And it's first and second and nobody out. Kyle Schwarber in his 26 home runs, tied for fifth in the major leagues. 
That skips in, and it's one and one. Taiwan Walker was able to navigate out of a huge spot for the Phillies. Gave up one, but the bases loaded, nobody out. And got the next three outs. Orioles could not score a run. One run in for the Phillies. Kyle Gibson will try to do the same thing. Perfect pitch there by Gibson. And he got strike one on Schwarber with the first curveball of the night. One and two to Schwarber. Down and away, two and two. Well, Schwarber, I mentioned the home runs, 26 of them. That's good for fifth best in baseball. He's third in walks. So he's on base a lot and he has tremendous power. Yeah, Gibby got him the first time, struck him out on a changeup. He skies this in the air and foul ground. Plenty of room for Westbrook and he puts it away for a big first out. That is giant right there. And this time it's a fastball. It's a good sinking fastball down and away. Almost like Schwarber was thinking about a changeup, and he's a little bit tardy on his fastball. Trey Turner, the batter, but now with one out. And another tough guy to double up if you're looking for a ground ball double play. One of the stars for Team USA in the World Baseball Classic, first year in Philadelphia, and it has been a struggle. They cut and a miss on one. Yeah, but what a career it has been for Clay Turner. Two-time All-Star. Finished fifth in the MVP, MVP voting in 21. Finished seventh in MVP voting in 2020. This will go well foul. And it's 0-2 to Turner. So Trey Turner's lifetime on base plus slugging percentage, 840. This year right now, 687. Well, and we were talking to the Phillies guys yesterday, and they said he's just kind of expanded the zone a little bit more than what he typically does, and Gibson's got him in a good spot, 0-2. Try to get him to chase, but it's one and two. Gibson had a big strikeout game his last time out. That was against the Rays. In six innings, he punched out eight, only walked two. And he had a really good sweeper that day. It's been mostly heavy on the fastball and changeup so far tonight for Kyle Gibson. Bryce Harper is on deck. Henderson to third to get the lead runner. Nicely done there by Gunner. He gets the lead runner with his momentum taking him towards the bag. Yeah, I like this play here. Ball not hit hard enough to turn two. And as a middle infielder, you're going to throw the ball where it takes you. And that ball took Gunnar Henderson towards third base, so he just collects the lead out over at third, the second out of the inning. So there are two outs now, and just the one run in for Philadelphia. But now Kyle Gibson has to deal with Bryce Harper. It's still first and second, but now there are two outs. So very close to doing basically what Taiwan Walker did. Back in the top of the second inning. All one to Harper. Boy, a lot like Austin Hayes. Harper is a very good fastball hitter. Always has been. So he's done in runners in score position this year. 240, nine ribbies, two doubles. Down low to Harper. One ball and one strike. Great speed on the bases for Philadelphia. And that changeup just missed away. 2 and 1. Boy, that's a really good take. That tells me Bryce Harper is seeing it pretty good. That 
fastball actually started it as a strike for most of the way to just work it off the outside corner but Harper not offering. To the right side Frazier to first base and Gibson pitches out of it. The Phillies do get on the board but the Orioles still have a two to one lead as we head to the fourth. Toyota dealers for legendary safety and reliability choose Toyota and let's go places. But that would be fun to go partake in that, huh? A little I wiffle ball in a mini love field. This. Love this. Uh oh, did he get it? Nope. Doubling the gap though. Miniature Citizens Bank Park here for wiffle ball. Orioles lead this game two to one. Q to the right side off the bat of Hayes, right to the first baseman. Harper who touches the bag and Hayes is retired for the first down the top of the fourth. So Taiwan Walker and has not necessarily been easy allowing six hits a lot of hard contact. He's at 67 pitches but he's allowed just the two runs and now his team is on the board. Well, both of these starting pitchers worked at a huge jam. So it was Taiwan Walker in the second it was Gibson in the third. Yeah, two pitchers who've been around, Ben. No surprise there. And that just like we talked about, that takes mound time. Get yourself in those jams, figure out ways to get out of them. Colton Kowser, who walked his first plate appearance, ahead 2 0. And he slashes this foul off to our left, 2 1. How about that catch, huh? A little barehanded catch. Orioles fan or Phillies fan? Can we tell? I think it was neutral. <laughs> I didn't see orange or red. Three and one to Kowser. Two ground outs, five fly outs, a couple of strikeouts for Walker. And ball four. Another walk for Kowser. He's been on base twice tonight. Celebrate the life and legacy of Mo Gabba at Oriole Park on July 28th. Support the Johns Hopkins Children's Center by making a donation with your ticket purchase or shopping in the Orioles Authentic Store on Mo Gabba Day. To purchase tickets, visit Orioles.com slash tickets. And Westberg takes a strike on the inside corner on one. Westberg batting ninth tonight, struck out, looking with the bases loaded his first time up. Close play at first base on the pickoff attempt, but Kowser gets back.
Two shot foul ball off the bat of Westberg. And he's down the count 0 2. These two pitchers very similar. Both will use that two seam fastball in. And Gibson like his, likes his change up away. Taiwan Walker will go to the split finger fastball away. Down on strikes is Jordan Westburn. Two down. And that will get Gunnar Henderson to the plate. Yeah, not exactly where Walker wanted this. Look where Real Muto is on the outside part. This ball kind of runs on the inner third, but it's elevated just enough and a good velocity, 94 miles an hour, to punch out Jordan Westberg for the second time. Once looking and once swinging for Jordan. Henderson over two. He's also struck out against Walker. Hauser, by the way, looking for his first major league stolen base. But it was a part of his game every now and then in the minor leagues. He runs really well. Henderson, a line shot to center. Rojas now squares his body, and he makes the catch. Hit sharply off the bat of Henderson. And the Orioles leave one, and they lead this game two to one, heading to the last of the fourth. Madison is brought to you by PNC Bank, helping to make a difference. And by Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. I guess I didn't want to share. They, they both got their own pizza. I'll have a large, I'll have one too. Or maybe they got two different kinds and they, and they wanted to split it. The calorie's not really a thing in the city of brotherly love. No, not at the ballpark. I feel not like the all, ballpark. I feel like all bets are off at the ballpark. All right. You know I had one cheese stick today. You want to guess how many calories with the whiz? Well, I saw you in the gym this morning. I think we both knew what we were up for today. <laughs> we were both in the gym bright and early. I'm not going to call out any names. It was cheese steak did not make it to the gym today before the cheese steak eating contest or the cheese steak brawl. 2-0 to Castellanos. Gibson has allowed one run. That was in the bottom of the third. On the ground to Westbrook. And that's out number one in the bottom of the fourth. The Orioles are hiring for the postseason push. Join the team through a variety of game day positions. All positions include competitive wages, staff meals, free game tickets, and parking, and more. Apply today, Orioles.com slash job fair. That covers everything. Parking, a ball game, food. It's kind of like our job. A little bit of everything. One and to Bryson Stott. 
A lot of ground balls for Kyle Gibson so far tonight. Usually a good sign of that sinker. Yeah, he's got, what, six outs on his ground ball. 92 with some life upstairs right by Stott. Yeah, it feels like for me, for Gibson, it, it's been heavier on the fastball than usual for him with his usage. There's a good changeup. It felt like the sweeper was the pitch of choice against the Rays when he punched out eight. You mentioned the changeup has to be a weapon against all the left-handers and dangerous left-handers in this Phillies lineup. Yeah, see, sinker usage at 31% so far tonight. Typically, that sinker usage is about 25% the average game for Kyle Gibson. Why is that changeup so effective right on left? For whatever reason, lefties just don't see the changeup when it's a right on lefty changeup as well. But, but I, again, the key for me with the changeup for Gibson is he's got to use the inside part of the plate, either with the fastball or the cutter. Tough play. Tough play. And dug out by O'Hearn. Boy, this is so good by O'Hearn. And see, Gibson had to go all the way to the first baseline, so he had to try to navigate his throw around Stott, who was getting it down the line. Of course, Stott's going to run a little bit to the inside of the line because he knows where the ball is. So Gibson has to almost spike it in the dirt, but look at O'Hearn on the back end, just sticks his nose on it. Watch O'Hearn. See, this is a tough throw here. Well, O'Hearn has done it. And look, he's done it on both sides of the ball, too. Not only has he been outstanding offensively, but he has played a really good first base for the Orioles as well. Two outs and the base is empty for Real Muto, who pops up the first pitch. O'Hearn over and foul ground, and he will run out of room. That was a really nice play on both ends, Gibson and O'Hearn. Tough angle for Gibson. Yeah, that's one of those ones you just don't have time to step out and create a lane on that. you got to get rid of it as fast as you can. And Stott runs really well. Yeah, Stott's got 19 stolen bases to go along with a 301 average coming in. On one to Real Muto. Line drive foul ball 0 and 2. Now 108 off the bat. Yeah, and we wondered with Gibson and this team, this batting order, knowing him so well, this is where he played last year. Would he do something a little bit different? And he has so far. It's been a few more fastballs than usual. The 0-2. One and two. That sweeper missed. And one reason why he may not be using the sweeper as much is he just didn't have a feel for it yet, right? We've not seen him land many for a strike. And the ones he has thrown have really been a good bit off the plate. Well, when you have six pitches, how many are going to be working for you on a given night? Well, if you got six, you, you hope you got three of them really working well. He went back to it again and missed again. But that's a chase pitch, right? You're trying to... Get well, a bad swing. And it's also a situation with two out and nobody on, and you're aware ahead in the count where you can kind of get a feel for that pitch and maybe throw it a couple times, just trying to get a feel for it for later on in the game. Payoff pitch for Gibson. And it's spoiled by Rilmuto. Gibson has been efficient if he can retire Real Muto here in short order. That's 61 pitches right now. The 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And he blew a fastball by him. Kyle Gibson doing his thing, folks. Navigate out of a big jam and a three up, three down inning. And he finish, finishes off Real Muto with a good sinker down and in to get the Orioles off the field.
plus 450 and O'Hearn plus 700. DraftKings Sportsbook makes it easy to bet. Download the app and get your bets in now and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus instantly. Use promo code DIAMOND when you sign up. The Orioles have hit their share of homers this year. Have 118 now, 12th most in baseball. Rutschman 0 for 2. 13 home runs for Adley this year. And this is hit back to the pitcher Walker. Easy toss to first and Rutschman's retired. Orioles hit two home runs last night. Two solo home runs, one by Westberg, and then a monster shot from Ryan Mountcastle. Yeah, this team just continues to win, and they continue to win in different ways. You know, one game is small ball, where there's a couple sacrifice bunts, a couple sacrifice flies, maybe they steal a base or two. In other games, it's, it's due to the home run. You know, logically speaking, Ben, the teams that are kind of one dimensional, even if they win a lot, and they rely just on the home run or just on speed or just on one thing. Those teams usually run into something come late September and October. But if you can figure out ways to win, given your night in, night out situation, your opponent, a lot of factors on a given night, those are the teams that you have to be versatile, right? And the Houston Astros, who won last year, that's a versatile team, right? They can hit for average, they can steal some bases, but they can hit the long ball, too. I think the Yankees are the perfect example of a team you're talking about over the last three or four years. They hit a ton of home runs, right? And when they're hot, and they're rolling, they can beat anybody. But when that offense goes cold and you're one dimensional, and that's how you win ball games is just by hitting home runs, then all of a sudden it becomes very difficult to win. Yeah, we've seen a few teams built that way over the last few years. Above all things, my takeaway from that series against the Rays in St. Pete, one is the Orioles' response to that kind of October environment and their ability to execute in that sort of environment. Yeah, pressure situations. We know how tough it is to win in Tampa. I mean, teams go in there, they just don't do well there. And it's not very often you roll into a four-game series, you win three out of four at the drop. Two and two to Santander. Orioles lead the game two to one. A win tonight for Baltimore would be four in a row. And six out of seven. Well, just like last year, the month of July has been good to the Orioles so far. 14 and 6 in the month of July. It was it was it was the month of July last year. The Orioles got hot and they had that long winning streak. To the left side, that's the third baseman Bohm. Time to get it across, and Anthony's retired. Two quick outs. For Taiwan Walker in the fifth. He is at 85 pitches. He's thrown over 100 pitches in two of his last three starts. Yeah, I don't see any activity yet in the Phillies' bullpen. Some guys moving around, but nobody throwing yet. Walker settled in nicely. To very deep center field his last time up. Didn't miss a home run by much. Big cut by O'Hearn. Walker, we mentioned earlier, had that career year with the Mets last year that earned him a four year contract with the Phillies. Yeah, this is his first year in Philadelphia, but he's been around his fifth team. He signed with the Phillies back in December of 2022. One of those big pitchers on the open market. A ground ball to the right side. And Harper just beats O'Hearn to the bag. And then there's a collision. Mm. Well, Bryce Harper didn't have many reps over there at first base. And the one thing you do as a first baseman, you don't go across the bag 
He stepped a little bit too cross. That's two big guys colliding down there at first base. Looks like everybody is okay. It's a one, two, three inning for Taiwan Walker. By Tarper here. He'd go to step to bag, but he stepped a little bit too far across it. And that is a no-no right there. Last of the fifth, Kyle Gibson pitching well tonight. He's allowed one run on three hits, and he throws strike one to Alec Bohm, who doubled and scored back in the third. Yeah, it has been big time fastball command for Kyle Gibson so far. Rhino Hurd stays in the game. It looked like he was going to, but there was a collision at first base with Bryce Harper, and you said it, Ben. Those are two big guys. You can tell he is still searching for that sweeper. It has been his best pitch this year. Opponents only hitting 159 off of it with a 49% swing and miss. And it has not really been a factor so far tonight. But the good news is he's up two to one in the fifth. There you go. Well, if you can get that one going. Yeah, that was it. And that one looked more vertical mm -hmm. down. That wasn't a typical sweeper action. Went hard right to left. That had a little more depth to it than typical. Okay, two in a row is thrown good. So if you're a pitcher, do you constantly try and find that pitch yes. you need? Especially if it's your best pitch. Like you know, and I felt like the last inning he was trying to feel for it in a in a two strike situation with, with two outs already, and he was going to throw a couple of extra ones just to get a little feel for it. And then you may go out in between innings and you get seven tosses, right? And maybe you spend five of those seven tosses. Working on the pitch you're struggling with, just trying try to get a feel for it so when the batter steps in the box, maybe you start to find it. And it'd be a good time to find it because now he's getting ready to start going through the lineup for the third time. So you don't give up on it, even if you don't have it or no. Early. It's not one you're going to put in your back pocket, not when it's been your best pitch. The one two pitch to Bohm. Just missed down and away, two and two. The Orioles pitching coaches there. Uh, Chris Holt, Darren Holmes. Ground ball, and it's going to go foul wide of the bag at third. And we'll do it again at two and two. Well, Kyle Gibson, at least from a batting average standpoint, he's done better each time through the order. Two balls and two strikes. And that's a foul ball. Now he's throwing a little bit of everything. Sinker, cutter. Three sweepers in a row. Another sinker back to the sweeper. And yet the eighth pitch, another sinker. Where will Kyle Gibson go to get him out here? The 2 2. 
He goes to the changeup right on right. That's something he hadn't thrown him, and it worked too. Well, Bohm says, Bohm is saying he got a piece of that. Brandon Hyde on the top step of the dugout. Yeah, definitely the changeup. Let's see if Bohm gets a piece of this or not. Man, I couldn't tell on that. Well, the umpires, I wouldn't even call it a conference. They nodded towards each other and they agree it was a foul ball. So we'll do it again. And now it's three and two. You don't want to lose him now. Frazier will make the play. Well, let's take a look how the fourth inning inning ended with JT Romuto at the play. It was two out. And Gibson's going to throw this pitch right here. Throws the ball to the outside part of the play. Watch his head just slightly look at Rutschman when he gets the ball back. Watch him. Slight movement with his head to the inside part of the plate. Tell him, there it is right there. See how he kind of leaned over to Rutschman? He said, I want the two-seam fastball in. So he called his own pitch right there. That's just reading bats from a veteran pitcher. And what he looked at is Romuto, he threw a fastball off the plate, and Romuto covered it, right? And when you can cover that pitch, he says, I want the two-seam fastball in this time. So you don't even have to give a sign and watch where Rutschman sets up. Two-seamer perfectly placed on the inside part of the bat. That's what you call, forget the scouting report. I'm going to read what the bat is doing. Brandon Marsh at the plate one and one. So to kind of skip over the, even in the era of pitch comms, trading signs, yeses and nos, why even skip over it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, he read the, he read the swing and he got the ball back from Rutschman. And he knew exactly what pitch he wanted to throw next. It was no sense in calling a pitch. He just looked at Rutschman and was a slight movement of the head, saying, I want the fastball to the inside part of the plate. And that's what pitchers do with catchers all the time. It's always eye contact in moments like that when you're getting a new ball back, the batter's out of the box doing what he does. You may motion, hey, I want to throw the curveball. I want a fastball in, I want a fastball away. See, Gibby's always got his eyes on Rutschman. Two and two to Marsh. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Strikeout number four for Gibson. Yeah, and another breaking ball, too, and well placed. And watch where this ball starts. Right in the heart of the plate, but it has some good depth to it. That's the curveball at 80 miles an hour. It's in the zone and gone. And so is Brandon Marsh with the second out here in the fifth inning. Gibson and out away from a one, two, three, fifth. Johan Rojas takes a sweeper strike on one. Rojas and RBI base hit in his previous at bat in the third. Two to one Baltimore, last of the fifth. And a fastball high to Rojas, one and one. So the next pitch for Gibson will be number 80. Kyle threw 91 his last start against the Rays. That sweeper missed. Two and one. Popped up. O'Hearn with room in foul ground. And a one, two, three, fifth for Kyle Gibson. And we're five complete in Philadelphia. It's two to one Baltimore.
Now, now get unlimited access to August games for just $60. Passes include a general admission standing ticket with access to the flag court and roof deck. Purchase today at Orioles.com slash unlimited. Orioles at two to one. That was Scotty Norton. Great cameraman sure for Madison. Night off. Enjoying the ball game. Big baseball fan, big Orioles fan. His son might be one of the biggest Orioles fans. Maybe the biggest Alvy Rutschman fan out there. A lot of Orioles fans packing the streets of Philadelphia these last few days. One and one to Mount Castle, who's working on a two for two night. Back to you score both Orioles runs. Yeah, one one count looking for something middle middle kind of starts his swing on the fastball well out of the zone. Taiwan Walker he's allowed two runs on six hits. That's a good take by Mountcastle so when he's feeling for it. He will swing and miss at that pitch. It's two and two to Mountcastle. And he takes one high, three and two. Walker's pitch count approaching 100. And there is now action in the bullpen for Philadelphia. And a walk for Mount Castle. He's been on base three times. Yeah, that's a nice at bat there. Got down one ball and two strikes. Lead off runner on for the Orioles here in the top of the six. That's Strom getting loose. For the Phillies. Frazier will bat. He's also had a nice night. And he hits his foul out of playoff to our left. He's two for two with a double. He doubled in Mountcastle last time up and then was thrown out of third trying to stretch it into a triple. Yeah, he's got a nice hold in between first and second. Harper having to hold the runner on Mountcastle at first. Going two to Frazier. And he rolls his foul. So Walker has done a nice job hanging around in this game. A lot of hard contact early for Taiwan Walker. Orioles had him on the ropes, it felt like, early in this game. Bases loaded, nobody out. Inside to Frazier, one and two. Yeah, the Orioles had what? One run in, and the bases loaded, and nobody out in that second inning. Struck out Westberg, a couple of fly balls, one by Henderson, and one by Rutschman. Down on strikes goes Frazier. Well, you can't throw a breaking ball any better than this right here. Gets ahead of Frazier, then you want to expand the zone. It's a breaking ball this time, and well done. Just underneath the bat. Austin Hayes, the batter, one for two with an RBI. Nearly hit him. One and zero to Hayes. With Kowser on deck, and the left-hander loose in the Philadelphia bullpen, you wonder if this is close to the end for Taiwan Walker. This could be the last batter for Walker. Colton Cowles with the lefty on deck. That pickoff throw almost sailed on Bryce Harper.
Hayes to right field. Castellanos back, turning around. On the edge of the warning track, he makes the catch. So Hayes retired, and Mount Castro back to first base. Yeah, that might be it for Taiwan Walker. And here comes Rob Thompson, the Phillies manager. So Taiwan Walker gets a couple outs in the six. He will leave this game down two to one. And he will give way to the Philadelphia bullpen. His skipper seems pleased. Thompson takes the ball. Orioles lead, the, lead this game two to one. Jam. 104 pitches, he threw 65 strikes. I'll tell you what, he navigated out of a huge jam in the second inning. Been a little bit, only gave up one run in a bases loaded, no out situation. Gave up one in the third, and then he went in shutdown mode in the fourth and fifth, collected two outs here in the sixth inning. So a total of five and two thirds, six hits, two runs. He did walk three and punched out four. And he'll give way to the left hander, Matt Strom now. Strom making his 32nd appearance of the year. Six wins out of that bullpen. Solid ERA. Look at the strikeouts. 76 strikeouts. Only 15 walks in his 60 innings of work. And opponents hitting 217 off the left-hander Strom. He has an allowed nine long balls. Strom in his eighth season. And his first pitch to Kowser, a strike at the bottom of the zone, 0-1. Going to be a lot of fastballs by Strom. See the four-seam fastball at 44%. Sinking fastball about 19%. Slider cutter and a changeup as well. Probably that slider is his best pitch. Opponents hitting only 175 off the slider. Pretty nasty slider there to jump ahead 0 2. Now Castle still on at first base, but there are two outs as the Phillies go to their bullpen. Down in this game, 2 to 1 to Baltimore. Tried the cutter there and it just missed. One and two to Kowser. Not an easy matchup for Kowser here left on left. No, because Strom's one of the guys that kind of steps across his body, almost steps directly up the left handed hitter. So the ball is actually starting almost right at you. Strom last into a game with a scoreless inning. Against the Guardians on July 22nd. And Kowser stays alive. One and two to Kowser. Jordan Westberg would be next. 
And Kowser is down on strikes. Orioles leave one, but they still lead this game two to one as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Busy night. Really good play on defense here. Stock gets a swing and bunt down the line and watch this play at first base. Just picks it with Stock right on top of him. Then a ground ball of his own the very next inning and he's busted down the line and Bryce Harper just trucks him right here. But he was fine. Back out at first base. Well Kyle Gibson going to work in the bottom of the sixth and on the first pitch a pop up. Gunnar Henderson in short center makes the catch. Thank you very much, says Kyle Gibson, as Kyle Schwarber, his former teammate, is retired. One away. Gibson at 83 pitches. He's completed six innings this season 12 times. He's trying to do it for a 13th time. He has a two to one lead. And he'll deal with Trey Turner with one out and the base is empty. Yeah, trying to collect his 11th quality start of the year. Trying to make it back-to-back -back quality starts. He's allowed just the three base hits tonight. Well, and for me, th this is the, I got to look at the numbers, but just watching the game, this is the heaviest usage I've seen with his fastball in a while. That was the changeup right on right. And Turner watched it go by. Well, Fuji starting to get loose in the Baltimore bullpen. He's had two days off since he last pitched. The 1-1. One, one. one and two to Turner. Turner 0 for 2. He's hit it on the ground twice against Gibson. Two and two to Turner. Well, Kyle Gibson, if he can win this game, he'll be the second Oriole to reach double digit wins. The 2 2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Boy, and there is the classic Kyle Gibson sweeper right there. I mean, you can't throw one any better than this. And watch this thing turn right here. I mean, it just explodes down and away from Trey Turner. See how he kept working with that pitch? It was a non-factor pitch for him really the first three or four innings. But then he found it a little bit in the fifth, and he's carried it over to the sixth. And that's what you were talking about. Keep throwing it. Keep getting a feel for it. 
because as you navigate through the lineup for a third time, you're going to need to show him something different. And so it's a little bit of a blessing that he didn't have it early, and now he's starting to find it, and now he's got something different for him the third time through the lineup. One and one to Harper. It is interesting that he never gave up on it and found it, found it important enough to keep going back to it every once in a while, but then you saw him going back to it more and more often, finally. And I loved how he worked it in. He worked it in in low leverage situations, right? Nobody on, two out, two strike count. Let me flip a few of them in and let me try to get a feel for it. Harper to right field and deep. Santander turning around. And he'll watch it fly on out. And this game is tied at two. Uh, Bryce Harper. One of the best in the game. Two-time MVP. And it's just a matter of time. And the Orioles have pitched him really well in this series so far. 105 off the bat. 396 feet. Bryce Harper's fifth home run of the year. Boy, I'm going to tell you, he put a charge in that one. Trying to get that ball down the way. Looked like a changeup, and it never really got to where it needed to be. It didn't quite have the same action on it as the Gibson changeup typically has. And Gibson, Gibby knew it as soon as Harper touched that one. Love that reaction. Career home run number 290 for Harper. Back to Gibson, side retired. In the sixth, but this game is tied after the long home run by Bryce Harper as we head to the seventh inning in Philadelphia. to make a difference the subway series right now yankees being blanked by the mets at home it's mets with a four nothing lead red sox and braves are in a delay right now that game waiting to happen meanwhile the red sox earlier today sent kike hernandez back to the dodgers the dodgers will be hosting the blue jays later on this evening that is a west coast game guys of course stay tuned after this one we're never going to catch a break it's another nail biter here which means you got to watch o's extra by pnc and hopefully it's a winning O's extra, Melanie. Thank you. Matt Strom still out there for the Phillies as we're starting over here. Top of the seventh, Jordan Westberg takes strike one on one. Yep, here we are. Late innings and another nail biter. Another close game. But you know what, Ben? I don't think we would have it any other way. Apparently the Orioles don't want it any other way because this is how they like to play. Westberg. And that's caught in fair territory by Castellano, so he's retired. You know what, though? The Orioles seem to thrive in these moments. It's been pretty ridiculous, actually, what they've done over a couple of seasons when it comes to winning on the road, one-run games, and then my favorite, because this is Orioles baseball, after all, come from behind victories. That's what the magic is all about, Ben. Yeah, I mean, look. 
that, that's what sticks out to me is a comeback victory. He's 35 this year. Nobody in baseball has more. The Orioles have the second most in baseball the last two years. Only one behind the Dodgers who have the most comeback victories the last two years. Sometimes, even in today's era of baseball, with all the numbers and all the stats, it goes back to a mentality and a culture and coming up big in big spots. Believe it or not. Yeah, and a belief that you can. And it's a young team that just believes it can. And I think it got a ton of confidence last year, this young team, because they put themselves in the AL East in a lot of tight games. And that's when you learn how to win. You learn how to win the close games. I think it's funny when young players come up here, and I've seen a lot of prospects. Some succeed, some not succeed, some get hurt over the years. And you think you have it nailed on what the next good one looks like. You don't. But Gunnar Henderson, Rutschman, these are people with incredible confidence in their ball abilities. And they've really, in their life, only known success and victory. And Gunnar just out down the line at first on a bang bang play. He's walking slowly to make sure there's no review, and Brandon Hyde says play on. So two away in the top of the seventh. Yeah, Gunnar Henderson plays the game at one speed, and that is Ooh. wide open. And he almost beat Strom to the bag there. That was very close. When your stars go that hard down the line, what kind of message does it send? It sends a message to the entire team. This is how we play the game. We play the game wide open. You know, you don't see any Orioles dogging. I mean, they're all busting it wide open, getting down the line, taking an extra 90 feet. I mean, that's just winning baseball. But it starts with the skipper. It starts with Brandon Hyde and the message that he sends every spring training and how we're going to play the game. Now what a hire, Brandon Hyde. Now skippering the team with the best record in the American League. He has brought in the Orioles, brought the Orioles back to prominence, at least from the on-field perspective. Leading the American League, he's coming into tonight by two and a half games. Of course, Mike Elias and company. And the work they've done in the front office, putting this roster together up and down the organization, including the first overall pick in the 2019 draft in Adley Rutschman. Easier said than done, blending it all together for Brandon Hyde. Well, it's going to go down as a historic draft. I mean, Joey Ortiz was in that draft. Of course, Henderson was the first pick in the second round in that 2019 draft. Adley to right field, and that is down for a base hit. A sharp single to right for Rutschman with two outs. And the Orioles have a base runner in a 2-2 game. 101 off the bat. I love where he hits this ball too. Just a backside, let it travel, let it get deep, inside out swing, and just rifles it out to right field. So Red's been a one for four night so far. Santander will bat. One for three. That was all left-handed against the starter Walker. Santander hitting better this year right handed and he takes strike one from Matt Strom on one as the let's go O's champ begins here in Philadelphia and it's obviously being received so well <laughs> big cut and a miss 0 and 2 as the Rocky music plays. I'm going to the steps tomorrow, by the way. Want to join me for that run? I felt like after all the cheesesteaks we ate today, it, it would have been a good time for a rocky run. Let's do it tomorrow. How serious are you about it? Very serious. Up and away to Santander. Listen, I'll show you going up the steps, putting your arms in the air. Do I have to wear a gray, no. like a gray, gray jogging suit? Can you play the music if I do it? I will. Melanie says she's already going to do it. And she has this incredible phone app where she can make it look like great video. Santander called out on strikes. Mm. I don't know about this one here, but it's a perfect pitch by Strom. Boy, JT Ramuto rocks to the inside part of play to watch for this fastball. Is boom. 
Maybe a ball inside when he gets the call and the Phillies are off the field. Well, the night is complete for Kyle Gibson, and an outstanding night it was for the big right-hander. Six innings of work, four hits, two runs, did not walk a batter. He used his fastball a lot as he punched out five. 92 pitches, 56 of them were strikes, and now it's time for our MedStar pitching change. Easy access to the same care the Orioles trust. Visit MedStarHealth.org to find care now. And there is Shintaro Fujinami. Fuji enters the game. For a third time as an Oriole here in the bottom of the seventh in a tie game. Well, here's Fuji's numbers on the year to scorch with Oakland and Baltimore, making his 37th appearance. ERA is elevated, but he's been a lot better as of late. 51 innings of work. He can strike you out with a fastball that will tick up to 102. A really good split finger fastball, an occasional breaking ball. To shortstop, Henderson with plenty of time on to first. And what turned out to be a bang bang play was Stott hustling up the line, but one away. Well, there's the bullpen availability for tonight. And white was last night. Yesterday's game in red is what they've thrown over the last three days. Now, we don't know if Bautista is available or not. We feel like Cano is because his usage is down just a little bit compared to Cano. Baker threw only seven yesterday. It's a great graphic. And it tells a big part of the story and why Kramer's seven yesterday and Gibson six tonight. So important. And what CNL Perez did last night, nailing it down in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, he walked the tightrope, but his second career save, first of the season. Fuji throwing more strikes early in this game compared to his last outing. Better. Well, that's the key for him. I mean, if, when he gets himself in trouble, it's when he begins to walk guys. But the stuff is really, really good. I mean, his fastball, his four-seam fastball on the year, his average is shade above 98. That's good finger fastball. He'll throw it about 93 miles an hour. And there's the cutter behind that. That's the three pitches used the most. Probably his best pitch as far as opponent's batting average has been that cutter at 182. Some serious heat right there, and it's one and two. Yeah, not only is it big time octane, but located perfectly too. 99 is one thing. But 99, when you dot an eye on the outside part of the plate, brings it to a totally different level. Yeah, strange game against the Rays. That was the third game of the series. Swing and a miss. 100, and he blows it by Real Muto. That's a smoke show right there is what that is. 
How about triple digits right to the top of the zone and no chance for Ramuto who has punched out all three times so far tonight. Yeah, Fuji entered that game on Saturday in a critical spot and it was walk, walk, wild pitch. And he got off to a bad start. He was able to right the ship a little bit. A flare to second base caught by Frazier and a very easy one, two, three, seven for Fuji. Here are the DraftKings do ups. We'll look at live home run odds to the next three hitters when we come back. The DraftKings Sportsbook makes it easy to bet. Download the app and get your bets in now. Brett and Ben back with you. Top of the eighth, tie game, another nail biter. Matt Strom has been good out of the Phillies bullpen. And here are your DraftKings home run odds for the next three Orioles batters. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, and new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus instantly. Use promo code Diamond when you sign up. Home one to O'Hearn. There is a right hander getting loose. In the Philadelphia bullpen. Yeah, it feels like this is going to be the last batter for Strong. He didn't face the final lefty. O'Hearn down 0 and 2. The way Mountie's been swinging it tonight. Yeah, you can't let him face a southpaw right now. You would not, not the way Mountcastle typically hits left handed pitching. O'Hearn into right. Castellanos is back. He's at the wall, and that baby's gone. Left on left for Ryan O'Hearn. And the Orioles regain the lead three to two. Come on now, Hitman Hearns. Remember, he homered only for the fourth time in his career off a lefty in Tampa. Brandon Hyde leaves him in, trusts him again. And what do you know? Ryan O'Hearn does it again. A bomb to right center field. His ninth of the year, his 33rd RBI. And guess what? The Orioles are back on top three to two. And if the Orioles get six more outs, that would be his third winning hit of the road trip, Big Ben. Well, you talk about just lean on one, huh? Breaking ball left up and in. And watch this swing. I mean, direct to it, short and tight. Thing of beauty. And congratulations to Jenny Portillo, who just won herself another $500 for being the Maryland Lottery's fast play home run richest contestant of the game. Rhino Hearns letting the skipper know. Brandon, I can hit me, I can hit me some lefties. He keeps 20 like that. He's gonna get more and more opportunities. And Mountcastle with a couple of hits. All right handed, -handed yeah. pitching tonight. That's called a good problem. Anytime you got tough choices to make as a skipper, that's always a good thing. Brain on a Mountcastle. And he thought it was ball four. 
Ryan O'Hearn. Left on left for a second time on this road trip. After not hitting a homer off a lefty the entire season, only three times in his career, the last two lefties he's faced, two home runs. I love what you said earlier, and this is from O'Hearn. He said, I'm done with AAA. I'm not going I'm back. I'm done. And look, when he, he wasn't smiling when he said it. He was as serious as he could be. Like, I'm not going back. This is where I belong, and this is where I'm going to spend the rest of my career is in the big leagues. And he meant it. It's kind of amazing how it ended with him in Kansas City because he got off to a good start. He was able to show flashes early in his time there. Kind of got buried as Mountcastle walks for a second time on base four times tonight. He got buried there. He ended up in a situation last year for O'Hearn where he was basically a pinch hitter only against the opponent's best leverage reliever in a tight ball game in the seventh, eighth, or ninth innings. And that's a hard way to make yeah. a living. That's Junior Marte getting heated up in that Phillies bullpen. Yeah, and look, Ryan O'Hearn came to spring training ready this year. I remember seeing him in spring training. He had over 350 in spring training. He had three home runs. He drove in runs. He played a good first base. And that carried over. Did make the club, obviously, out of spring training. Went to AAA. Didn't stick his lip out in AAA either. Put up giant numbers in AAA. Just letting everybody know I'm down here and I'm ready. And when he got his opportunity, he has shined. Orioles had this cluster of first basemen and outfielders that were looking for another left-handed bat. You know, it's easy. At the yeah, end. Francis it's Cordero, e Ryan O'Hearn. Yeah. And it's easy for a guy to have a tremendous spring training. And then you get sent down, and a lot of times it takes all the air out of your bubble. But Ryan O'Hearn didn't feel sorry for himself. He said, you know what, I'm going to continue to do what I do. Because I know my time's coming. Orioles in ad mode right now. They lead this game 3-2. to two. Way inside to Frazier. Ryan Mountcastle, a second walk tonight. Yeah, how about on base four out of four times for Mountcastle? Two singles, two walks. Usually a good sign for him moving forward after the big blast last night. Frazier rips this into right field. Castellanos oh! makes the snow cone grab. What a play. Mountcastle trying to get back to first, and he does. What a catch by Castellanos. Are you kidding me? That is a game changer. Would have been at least been second and third and nobody out. Maybe, maybe Mountie would have scored on this. And how about Castellanos reaching out all he's got. And I'm talking about a snow cone right in the tip of the glove. And somehow he hangs on to that. And that gets by him. I think that's a triple to run in. And that is tailing away from him. Boy, how about that play, huh? Another good ball game. Orioles have the one run lead as Rob Thompson goes to his bullpen again. Orioles trying to add more as we continue from Philadelphia. His second reliever of the night, Junior Marte, making his 30th appearance of the year. 
5.33 ERA. 27 innings, he's punched out 25 opponents, hitting 279 off the right-hander, Marte. Yeah, 28-year-old right-hander, just in his second season, 39 games last year for San Francisco. Very similar numbers this year for Philadelphia. Couple different fastballs, two and a four-seamer and a slider, but it is a big arm. It's a fastball that'll average about 98 miles an hour. Sometimes he'll push it into triple digits. 3-2 Baltimore. As Austin Hayes takes 97 on the inside corner for a strike on one. With some sink, too. And that's that sinking fastball. That's the one he'll use the most. He'll throw it about 51% of the time. Four-seamer only about 9% of the time. Now Castle leads from first. A run in for the Orioles. And that's the difference in this game. Q shot foul. Off the bat of Hayes, 0-2. This is the middle game of three between Baltimore and Philadelphia. The finale tomorrow evening here at Citizens Bank Park. Off day for the Orioles Thursday, and then the Yankees coming to town over the weekend. Ripped up the middle, but to the second baseman, a flip to Turner at the bag for one, and that's all the Phillies will get. That ball was smoked off the bat of Hayes, but now there are two outs. Yeah, and it hit right off the top of the mound, or the front side of the mound. I think that slowed it down a little bit. Now, Stout was shaded right up the middle. He yeah. is shaded right there anyway. Probably going to catch it. And maybe the Orioles catch a break on it, because that ball doesn't hit the mound and slow down. It's probably a good one hopper right to Stout, who would step on the bag and complete the double play. Yeah, that hit right on the slope of the mound. That definitely took some of the velocity off of it. But maybe the Orioles did catch a break, and it does get Cowser to the plate. Hayes on at first base. Kowser's walked twice, and he struck out. Line foul off the bat of Kowser. Yeah, that Orioles-Yankees series coming up on Friday. Man, get you some tickets and come out and see that one. That's going to be fun. High stakes. That's upstairs. High stakes the rest of the way for the Yankees, kind of in a critical moment as the deadline nears. Here on July 25th now with the deadline August 1st. The 1 2. Pulled inside, 2 and 2. Yankees right now still in last place in the American League East. The Orioles could essentially lower the boom on their season over the weekend. No doubt. Still no Aaron Judge. That offense continues to struggle. Now the Yankees can pitch it. Yankees still in wild card contention. Two and a half back for that final spot. But 53 and 47. And a lot of teams cluttered. In the American League standings. And it just feels like it's going to stay that way the rest of the year. Hauser stays alive. Yeah, he's off and moving on that one. And Marte takes a while. Like he takes a while to uncoil and get the ball to home plate. And when he's moving, Fourth Kowser can somehow find the gap, or maybe get one down the right field line. Swing and a miss. Down goes Kowser. And Marte strikes out Kowser, but the Orioles do add one. Ryan O'Hearn with another one. Do it, Ryan O. Ryan O'Hearn's ninth long ball of the year, and guess what? Orioles have a 3 to 2 lead.
podcast is presented by the authority of the Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Three to two Baltimore, last of the eighth. Brandon Marsh, the batter for Philadelphia, and Fuji, who had a seven pitch, one, two, three, seventh, out there for a second inning of work. But there is a new shortstop into the game for Baltimore. Jorge Mateo has replaced Gunnar Henderson. Now remember Henderson in his last at bat. Grounded the ball to Harper. It was a foot race with the pitcher strong over to the bag. And he kind of lunged for the bag. And I'm not saying he pulled up. See how he lunged right there was a big step. Mm. And see how something gave right there just a little bit on the left ankle. And he wasn't really limping but he didn't look like himself going back to the dugout. Well at this point you're always going to err on the side of caution. But it does feel these last two nights. As Brandon Hyde is coming out. Did that hit Adley? I was just going to say, it just seems like the injuries yeah. and the bumps and bruises have been piling up these last two games. Well, this is the time of the year. You know, you start to get to the second half of the season. Boy, you can tell. Oh. I mean, that's like standing there and somebody throwing a ball 95 miles an hour right off your shoulder. And you say, oh, he's got a pad there. Well, I'm going to tell you, that pad, it's more for show than it is anything. Tough young man. Well, this is a team full of gamers is what it is. You think about the last two games. Mateo left yesterday's game with an injury. Hicks left yesterday's game with an injury and was I.L. today. Henderson's left this game. We'll see. Well, and this game's always been never a sprint. It's a marathon is what it is. And Brandon Hyde said it best about his bullpen when he was asked about it. He said, listen, I need Bautista. To be ready. Remember, Bautista fought some shoulder issues late in the year last year before he was shut down. He had a knee issue, and he was like, "Listen, I've got to keep the mountain healthy. I got to keep my guys healthy because we got to be there the entire season. And if I got to rest him an extra day, that's what I'll do." The three-two to Marsh. Fuji's pitch. Did he go? He did. One away in the eighth. Boy, 99 right. A shade below the bottom. Did he go? Oh, yes, he did. Will that hurt your feelings, Ben? Yeah, I mean, you just, I mean, he th Fujinami throws so hard, right? And so if you're in the box, dude, you got to get your foot down and you got to kind of start your swing because you got to catch up to 99 to 100. And sometimes you just can't stop. You realize. There's something wrong here with the disparity between Fuji's ERA and the stuff. Now, you go back and look at his numbers in Japan. Wasn't always lights out. Pitched in Japan for about 10 professional seasons. The walk numbers jump out to you over time. We saw that a little bit Saturday at the trot. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously that one thing. Now, we know he's been really good as of late, especially once he's settled in the Oakland bullpen. He also mentioned very honestly that he is nervous sure. entering a pennant race. But you know, the more times he puts this Oriole uniform on and the more times he hangs around this team and he gets comfortable with his environment and a new team. And look, when you make a move in the middle of the season, it's tough. But Brandon Hyde said, listen, we didn't we didn't go pick him up not to use him. We're going to use him. He's got to be a big part of our bullpen. Except for his first appearance, the last two have been leveraged spots. And it wasn't like he entered in a blowout. In that first game, he entered with the Orioles trailing, but it was close. That was on Friday night in St. Pete, the only game the Orioles lost there. The 1 2. In the air to right field, Santander, he's under it, and that's the second out. The MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. So Fuji 
trying to pitch two scoreless innings. He's five up, five down right now. He has two strikeouts. And here's Kyle Schwarber coming to the plate with the Phillies down just a run. That was the breaking ball there. And that's what the Orioles told Fuji when they got him. Listen, I know you got five different pitches, but we want you to focus on mainly your fastball, your split finger fastball, and your third pitch is going to be that breaking ball. We're going to simplify things. Going to. There's a really good splitter. So you're ahead now, Owen, to you've seen the little cutter and the splitter. What's next? You got you got a bunch of options. I mean, it's, I love 100 miles an hour above the zone. I always love that. And he just got the split finger on him, so that's a good pitch. But also, if you have enough confidence in your splitter to start it at the bottom of the zone, not in the zone, but at the bottom of the zone, and then have it work down below the zone, that could be a swing and miss, too. He laid off the splitter that time. One and two to Schwarber. A dangerous hitter always, but particularly in big spots. Fuji trying to protect a one run lead here in Philadelphia. The one two. Swing and a mm. miss. He struck him out. To it, Fuji, huh? How about Kyle Schwarber? A lot of home runs, but he just got fuji on that one. Orioles will take a one-run lead into the ninth inning. Black Gives Back Employee Volunteer Program spent their morning volunteering at So What Else in Baltimore, distributing food, organizing closet space, and guarding outside their building. It was founded in 2015. So What Else Baltimore provides emergency hunger relief and holistic youth development programming throughout Baltimore City. Job well done by the Orioles and Orange and Black Give Back. Three to two Baltimore here in Philadelphia. Now in the top of the ninth, the final yesterday, three to two. Our score right now, three to two. Middle game of three. As Jordan Westberg grounds one foul. 0 oh two with Junior Marte on the mound for the Phillies. Orioles trying to win their fourth straight game. As Yinier Cano. Gets loose in that Orioles bullpen, an indicator that Felix Bautista, as we expected, down again today. Yeah, and, and look, he's probably down. I mean, he didn't throw a ton of pitches, but he, he threw a lot. What, four out of five days he threw? But and one multi inning. That's exactly like, that was the one, right? When, when you got to stretch your closer to two innings in an appearance, that's what gets him probably an extra day's rest. But when he entered those games, the Orioles won those games, so you look back and say it was worth it. Westberg to left field, hooking, hooking. And hooking foul. Mm. 105 off the bat. He was on that. Jordan Westberg just a shade out in front. Yeah, I'd say it was a pretty good series. 
for Bautista. A win, a couple saves in a four game series. That's a career for some. 99 just off the plate, one and two to Jordan Westberg. Jorge Mateo now on deck in Henderson's spot. We still do not have word on why Henderson was removed from this game. Two and two to Westberg. Not a playoff to our right. This is a big time arm too and Junior Marte. Yeah, we have seen some good arms tonight. Westberg has worked himself back in this count. And he takes 99 high and it's full. Ball four to Westbrook here in that walk. Catch Orioles baseball anytime, anywhere on the Masson app. Watch games live and receive expert analysis and player stats all in the palm of your hand. Don't miss a pitch. Download yours today. So a leadoff base runner for the Orioles. Maybe a bunting situation here with now Mateo up and not Henderson. I like it. Put a runner in scoring position. Two chances to drive him in. You got Rutschman in the own deck circle. Not bunting and a slow roller to third base. Boom to second for one. Back to first. Out is the call. Well, you don't see Mateo get doubled off very often. And there will be a review. Ball with a good feed to Stott, who quickly turns it over. Boy, that is close. Man, I tell you what, and I love where Mateo stepped. You youngsters sitting at home watching, you see where he stepped. Baltimore is challenging the alcohol at second base and the alcohol at first base. Alcohol at second base and at first? Yeah, that's what he said. Well, this is big for a lot of reasons, but assume there was an out at second base for a second. If Mateo's on, yeah, it's one out, one on, but you have Rutschman and Santander up behind him, and you have an immediate stolen base situation with Mateo on base. Boy, did you see where Mateo stepped? Now, is he on, is Stott on the bag? There he is. Yeah, yeah, he's on the bag right there. Okay, so the out will be confirmed. Looks like it's second. The question is, is Mateo out and safe? And boy, he got right to the front of that bag, and that's the difference. If he steps on top of that bag, he's clearly out. It is so close. We've seen some of the closest plays these last two days here at Citizens Bank. Well, Park. that's a great look at it right there. And the ball looked like it to me from that view. Mateo's big toe is on the bag, right on the front of the bag, and the gloves, the ball's not quite in the glove. After review, the call at second is confirmed. The runner is out. At first, the run is overturned. He is safe. Baltimore will retain their talent. One for two on the reviews. And Mateo will reach. Nice job by Mateo. And that's the ball, you know, when you get jammed like that on the inside part, you just can't get out of the box, right? And that's what hurt Mateo getting out of the box. Typically, he beats that out by a step. Now. A running situation, Ben? Definitely. Because Marte, again, it's not a slide step, or he hadn't shown one yet. And he takes a while. I would be surprised, assuming Mateo's healthy after getting slid into last night, if he doesn't try to take an extra 90 here. He's 23 of 26 on the season, stealing bags. Real Muto behind the plate. He's just thrown out 17 of 71 would-be base dealers. Maybe a pitch out early in this count. Rutschman the batter. 
Mateo not going, and it's 96 outside, 1 0. So that puts you in a pretty good count immediately because you're not going to pitch out 1 0. Harper holds on Jorge Mateo at first. Orioles lead by 1 3 to 2, top of the ninth. Throw over to first base, and Mateo back with the dive. Pretty good lead to by Mateo. Front foot on the cut of the grass. Loop foul out of play. One and one to Adley Rutschman. He has a base hit tonight in four trips. And that's a called strike. A 50-50 ball, a slider that just clipped the outside corner. One and two to Rutschman. Mateo has not moved yet in this at-bat. Not going again. And Adley pops it up. On the infield dirt. Stott. Makes the catch for out number two. No signs there that Mateo would be running. So here's Santander who doubled his first at bat. And is one for four. A strike one to Santander. That one leaks outside one and one. Yeah, you, look, you don't know. You know, the leg could be sore for Mateo, you know, and maybe that's the reason why he's yep. not running. That makes sense. Ground ball to shortstop. Turner with the backhand. He goes to first. And the Orioles are retired in the top of the ninth. Well, another chance at a 3-2 to two win. This time it will be up to Yanir Cano to close it out. High drama in Philadelphia. Steps to the plate to lead off the top of the eighth inning in a tie ball game off of Strom. And what does he do? How about a home run for the second time on his road trip off a left-hander? Ryan O'Hearn buries his ninth homer, his 33rd RBI of the year. Ryan, 
Hitman Hearns as he hits the homer hose. And boy, the Orioles will take that one run lead into the bottom of the ninth inning. And it will be Yan Year Cano making his 44th appearance. Had a day off yesterday, but not today. 1.48 ERA. Love the strikeout to walk ratio. 42 punch outs, only six walks. Opponents hitting 220 off the big right hander, Cano. He was very, very good on Sunday afternoon in St. Pete. A scoreless inning, a 1 2 3 inning with a punch out. It's been a little uneven recently for Cano. He does have four saves this season. For the second consecutive night, the Orioles will try and nail down a 3 to 2 victory without Felix Bautista. That doesn't happen every day. But they got a chance to do it. Yeah, Cano, I felt like probably his best outing in a while. And he's having trouble with the pitch comm issue. He can't hear anything. Ryan McKenna is now in center field. Colton Kowser moves to right. McKenna just back with the club today for the first time since July 3rd. And Colton Hyde, the son of Orioles skipper Brandon Hyde, out to deliver the new pitch comes. Now, Brandon Hyde going to his defensive package. McKenna can go get it in center, pushes Colton Kowser to right. And we do have news on Gunnar Henderson. Melanie? Hello. Yeah, guys, it's officially lower back discomfort for Gunnar Henderson. Thank you for that, Mel. So we will wait and see. Orioles lost Aaron Hicks to the injured list earlier today. Trey Turner leading off for Philadelphia. And he takes a strike one on the outer half all one. That's a good sinker by Cano. And look, we noticed, you know, a few outings ago for Cano that the arm slot was down a little bit. And got to talk to Darren Holmes about it. They knew it was down. They've been working to try to get that slot back up to that normal spot. Why is that so important is because his two-seam fastball has the most movement when it's in his typical slot. He had dropped down a little bit more than what he usually is, and he lost a little bit of control, and he lost a little bit of that sinking action on that two-seam fastball. Chop to shortstop. Mateo plays the big hop on to first. Got him. Huge, huge first out in the ninth inning in a one-run ball game. Because Trey Turner's a difference maker. If he reaches first base, you know he can steal bases on you. And that is big. And that's Cano at his best. When he's doing that and sinking that fastball, that's what he's going to create a lot of ground balls. Mateo knew he didn't have much time at all. So quickly in the glove and out to collect that first out. One away, and here's Bryce Harper. He tied the game with a home run his last at bat. And he takes a ball just inside. 1 0. Mm. Could What's have been the called. Attack here, ben? Could have been called. Harper is a really, really good fastball hitter. Always has been. And like, Cano doesn't have a typical fastball. It's high velocity with a lot of movement when he's right. That's the change up there. Here we are again. Orioles clinging to a one run lead trying to win again on the road trying to win again in a one run game and for the second consecutive night trying to win without Felix Bautista available. Yeah, this is danger here. Ripped in the left field Hayes over and he plays on a bounce and the time one is on. Boy, Bryce Harper is something else. A couple of singles last night, two hits tonight, including his fifth home run. And how about that piece of hitting? Ball on the outside part of the play, he didn't try to pull it. Hits it right where it's pitched, a bullet out to left. And there's a tie and run on first base. 106, the opposite way off the bat by Harper. Keep an eye on him now. He will run too. 30 years of age, but still runs really well as Castellanos takes a strike pretty much down the middle at 96, home one. Wave and a miss, and what a big cut by Castellanos. Going for the walk off there, Ben. Yeah, but this is a, as good as the swing was, it's a better pitch. That ball's got a lot of left to right in it, a lot of sink in it. And he's got Castellanos right where he wants him now. Can he finish him? The 0 2. 
Swing and a miss. He struck him out. On a changeup. How about that? Two fastballs. And that wipeout changeup at 91 miles an hour. Do it, Yanier. You, know he, you know he's going to strike a pose on you, too. When he gets you with one of those. Two down. Tie run still on at first. Ryan O'Hearn with a word for Cano. Trying to get his attention right now. Brandon Hyde yelling from the Orioles dugout to step off. Rutschman now out. And now Brandon Hyde is out. Yeah. Everyone trying to get on the same page. This is going to be the positioning of probably where they're going to play Ryan O'Hearn. And you're not going to back all the way off because you don't want that tie and run to get. But O'Hearn may get just behind Bryce Harper to give himself a little bit of room to be able to move. O'Hearn was desperately trying to get Cano's attention. And it, there's 37 plus thousand people here. And it could be as simple as, hey, let's keep an eye on Bryce Harper because we don't want him to take an extra night. Be aware of your base runner. That's the tie and run. And then Brandon Hyde, you don't see this a lot, but coming out taking control of the situation. That's kind of the feeling of Orioles fans everywhere right now. Nervous. The Orioles have a one run lead, two outs in the ninth. O'Hearn will hold on Harper, who does have those seven steals. Bryson Stott, the batter. And he rips this in the right field. A base hit, heading for the corner. Harper to third base. He's getting the wave around. The relay from Frazier. He can't handle it. And this game is tied up. Harper at 30 scores from first. Stott rips a double into the right field corner. And we're starting over in the bottom of the ninth. Bryson Stott 0 for 3 night until that swing right there. Looked like a change up left up. Supposed to be on the outside part of the plate. And boy, you could see Kowser was kind of swung over towards right center field. And once that ball got in the corner, Bryce Harper can still pick him up and put him down. And we are all new again. Stott drove him in. By the late innings, it's been Bryce Harper for the Phillies. Who else? So now Real Muto will try and be the hero against Yanir Cano. The winning run at second base. A slow roller to shortstop. Tough play for Mateo. Double clutch. Play at first. Too late. Now yeah, Jorge Mateo had a little bit of trouble in the transfer here. Trying to get the ball out of his glove into his throwing hand. And the Orioles want to review. Boy, Real Muto can get down the line, huh? For 32 years old being a catcher. And another close review. Watch this right here. Watch Mateo. Right there. A little extra step, a little bit of trouble. And then was it the difference or not? I don't know, was that big toe of Real Muto on the back? Well, Mateo did it last inning, and Real Muto does it here. Shortest distance between two lines, two, two spots, is get to that shortest distance on a straight line, and that's where he stepped to, right on the front of the bag. The fans here at Citizens Bank Park, they think Real Muto is safe. And the bottom of the ninth will continue. After view, the call on the field is confirmed. The runner is safe. Confirmed. First and third now. There are two outs. And it will be Cano versus Alec Bohm. An infield hit, now O'Hearn wants to chat with Cano again. Three, three ball game, bottom of the ninth. And Riamuto, with defensive indifference, I guess, gets to second base. That run 
matters not. But it does erase a fourth chance at second. Second and third now. But there are two outs. Mm. Well, I can notice on a couple of tight pitches that could have been called, including one to Harper. The left-hander, Gregory Soto, is getting loose in the Philadelphia bullpen if we play on to the 10th. Ground ball through on the left side, and the Phillies will walk it off. Alec Bohm, the final hero of this bottom of the ninth for the Phillies, and they win the game four to three. Yeah, tough one here. Boy, and with two out, Bryson Stott comes through with a big double to tie it up. Ramuto with an infield, a hustle infield hit to continue the inning for the Phillies. And Alec Baum picks up his second base hit of the night, a walk-off single. And the Phillies still won from the Orioles in the ninth inning. Well, the Orioles and Phillies will get to play a rubber game in the finale tomorrow. Alec Baum hit this pitch through on the left side. And the Phillies walk off the Orioles. Here at Citizens Bank Park. Yeah, and it wasn't a bad pitch at all. It was down, probably wasn't even the strike. But Baum just kind of leaned into it and stuck his nose on it. Just a routine ground ball that gets through. And the Orioles will have a chance to win this series tomorrow. Finally, a close game that doesn't go the Orioles' way. And let's check in with Melanie Newman for O's extra post game. Yeah, tough one here, guys, but they're so used to this at this point. Close games, which means there is plenty of reason to believe that the Orioles bounce back into this one tomorrow. But we have got O's extra post game presented by PNC coming up next. We'll take a look back at how this one broke down late. We'll hear from manager Brandon Hyde and so much more. Don't go anywhere.